What's up guys? Today we're gonna to be checking out another 4K ultra short throw projector. It is from AWOL Vision. It's the 3500. Let's get it unboxed and see what we have. So first off we get some accessories here. We get the composite connection, the power cord, the remote control, and some instructions and documentations. Here is the cleaning cloth. And included is a Fire Stick 4K Max. This is gonna plug into the back of the projector and give you all of your smart features. All right, so let's take a quick look around the projector itself. As we can see up top, this is a fairly large projector. It measures about 23 and a half inches wide. It's about 14 inches in depth and height wise, it's about five and a half inches deep. Up top, we get the motion sensor. So this will turn off the laser's light if you walk in front of its path. We get the lens itself. And up top, we have some call outs here. It is a trichroma laser, so it does have RGB lasers. It doesn't have a spinning DLP wheel, so this will cut down on the rainbow effect. Again, it does support 4K HDR. It's a DLP, Dolby Atmos, and DTS-X is supported. And also right here in the corner is a touch sensitive power button. And on the front bottom of the projector, you'll see some speaker grills here. So there is built-in speaker as well. So let's swing it around and see what kind of connections we got. For ins and outs, we got one optical output. We got a service port. We have one USB in LAN connection, the composite AV input, two HDMI 2.0 ins with HDMI number two supporting EARC. And behind this little trap door, we have the input port for the Fire Stick, of which connects right into that built-in HDMI port right inside this little alcove. There's also one more USB 2.0 in right on the side there. So this is a trichroma laser projector, like I said, so there is no spinning DLP wheel, so this will cut down drastically, supposedly, on the rainbow effect. This will give you 107% BT2020 color space coverage, as well as one million to one contrast ratio. This again is a DLP projector, so we'll use the TI.47 chip, which will upscale the 1080p resolution up to eight million pixels. So you will get actual eight million pixels on screen to give you a true 4K picture. And as far as screen size, this will go anywhere from 80 inches to 150 inches. So if you wanted to get 80 inch screen size, you would have to put it about six inches from the wall. And if you wanted to get 150 inch screen size, you're gonna have to put it at about 20 inches from the wall. I'm gonna be projecting on a floor rising screen from Vivid Storm, which I think is 100 inches. And one of the main reasons I wanted to review this projector is because it's one of the few ultra short throw projectors that actually supports 3D out of the box with active 3D glasses. So let's go ahead and get this thing set up and I'll come back and give you some thoughts and impressions. I'm gonna be using the projector with a 100 inch Vivid Storm floor rising ALR screen. It's about 10 inches from the back of the projector to the front of the screen. Now that we've got the projector set up, let's check out some of the settings. First option we have is image mode. Right now we are playing HDR content, so we get a few different options for that. The first option is HDR standard. Next is HDR vivid, HDR sport, HDR movie, and then HDR game. Now if you choose HDR user, you will have some different options that you can adjust. You can adjust the brightness, contrast, chroma, tone, and sharpness. Under advanced settings, we have MEMC, which is basically the soap opera effect, or motion interpolation, which is low, medium, and high. This is low delay mode for video games. Noise reduction, you can turn this low, medium, and high. Dynamic contrast, by turning this off, you should see how the image gets a little bit flatter. If you keep it on, it will raise the contrast levels. Under gamma, you've got dark, middle, and bright. Depending on the content you're watching, you might want to adjust this on a title by title basis. Since you can see that dark will elevate black levels and bring up the shadow detail, but then it tends to make the black levels raised. So like I said, you might want to try this out differently depending on what content you're watching. Under color temperature, you've got cool, standard, hot, which really warms up the image and is the most accurate for movie reproduction. Although I'm not sure why they call it hot, it should be called warm. And then under user, you can choose that and then you have the option to adjust the white balance. 
There are color correction controls, MPEG noise filter, low, medium, and high. And then for HDR, there's auto, low, middle, and then high. And since we are watching HDR content, the wide color gamut switch is switched on by default. If you're watching SDR content, you can turn the wide color gamut on and off. Under zoom mode, we've got auto, 4x3, movie expand, 16x9, and then back to auto. And then reset, you can reset all of your settings that you just made. And then there is 3D settings, which we will come back and take a look at later. Under light, we've got light settings here. You've got user, low dynamic, high dynamic, soft, standard, and bright. Although if you choose user, you do get an adjustable slider for the laser light output from one to a 10. And then last, there's an intelligent light sensor which will brighten or dim the laser according to the ambient light in your room. For projection mode, we've got front projection, rear desktop, front ceiling, and rear ceiling. So yes, the projector is ceiling mountable. And then there's actuator control, the correction chart, which will help you line up the projector with your screen, and then manual correction, which you can adjust the keystone and the warp. So if you want to choose a specific point, you can bring that angle in, and you can do this for all of the separate points. Once you get that situated, you can save it, or you can reset it back to default. And there is a focus as well. So by pressing up or down on the remote control, you can see that it gets blurry, and then you can also focus it right back up. And then the next section is sound. So you've got speakers, Bluetooth, HDMI EARC, and SPDIF, which is your optical. So if you choose the built-in speakers, you get a few different sound modes. You've got, you've got standard, music, movie, sports, and then user. If you choose user, you do have access to a five band equalizer. And if you are playing content, you have a few different options here. You've got Dolby Atmos or DTS Virtual X. Though I do feel that Dolby Atmos gives you the best sound for dialogue. And then you can reset all the settings here. This is your network settings, Bluetooth, and under general, you've got power settings, you've got default power on source, you've got most recent home composite HDMI 1, 2, or 3. This is the default that it's going to revert to once you power on the projector. There's a sleep timer from 10 minutes all the way up to 120 minutes. Standby light effect, which will pulsate the little LED indicator on the front of the projector. Power on lamp effect, which will flash as you're turning on the projector. And startup sound will play a chime once you turn the projector on. Here we've got a few different languages. You can change the time zone. You could choose between 12 hours or 24 hours. Input method. Eye care and laser outlet detection will activate if someone passes in front of the light sensors. CEC enable will turn on and off HDMI control. You've got a few different options for screen savers. Screen saver time before the screen saver kicks on. And then ketone will make a chime every time you press the buttons. And then the about page, we've got the projector's information, which you get the product model number. This does run on Android 9 and you do have 128 gigs of internal storage. You've got your update, user agreement, and then you can restore it back to factory defaults. And that is it for the settings. Now to test out the tone mapping, this is the horse scene from the Spears and Munsell calibration disc. If we go into the settings under image, we can go into HDR mode. You can see that we have it set on HDR user, but you can see how the tone mapping acts under different presets here. So this is HDR game. HDR movie, which really makes the whites warm. HDR sport, which is a lot colder than HDR movie. HDR vivid, and then HDR standard. So standard and sport looks relatively the same. And then HDR vivid is a little flatter, yet a little bit brighter. Then for the most accurate reproduction, you're probably gonna want on HDR movie. But if we do keep this on HDR user and we back out, we jump into the advanced settings. We can adjust the gamma between dark middle, and then bright. You can see as we go up, 
that the detail, the mountains and the tree line in the background kind of get washed out. So for this particular scene, dark seems to keep most of the footsteps in the snow on the bottom. While if we go back up to bright, you can see how it blows everything out. We can also drop out of this, go into HDR, and we'll check out what low does. So low blows out all the white highlights. Middle looks the same as it did on auto. And then on high, you can see it brightens up the image. It somewhat retains the shadow detail in the snow without clipping too much. And then the background as well, you lose a bit of detail in the tree line in the background there, although the whites do get brighter. But for the best image quality, I think the middle ground would be to set the HDR on middle, which gives you a nice balance between highlight detail and shadow detail. And this is actually pretty impressive for an ultra short throw because a lot of ultra short throws will actually blow out all these whites. So this is pretty impressive for this projector. Now in this screen here, you can see how it handles 10,000, 4,000, and 1,000 nit material. Of course, with the 10,000 nit material, it does struggle trying to tone map everything down. Now as far as black levels, this is probably one of the best ultra short throws that I've seen yet. Now the black levels aren't as good as JVC or Sony, but in the world of ultra short throws, this is definitely one of the best as far as blacks. There's a lot of detail in this particular shot where I've seen that entire tree line in the background get crushed and just leave just a long black streak. Whereas in this projector, you can actually see the individual trees lined up side by side to each other. So that's pretty impressive. And as far as colors, there are some projectors that actually have a bit of maybe yellowish tinge or maybe a bit of cyan push. This one actually looks natural throughout once you get your settings dialed in. So right now I do have this on HDR movie, which I feel looks the most accurate to what I see in my television set. And because this projector is so bright, you can see how these specular highlights in these buildings absolutely jump off the screen. This is almost similar to what I see in my 85 inch Sony X95K. And as far as overall brightness, especially with HDR materials such as this here, you can see this lights up my entire living room. And that's one of the great things about these ultra short throws is that because it is so close to the screen, you get so much light output coming back at your eyes that it really illuminates how bright the overall picture, which really makes the HDR pop and the colors really stand out with vibrancy. Now, if you are using this with 3D content, you will have to go in the image settings, go down to 3D settings, and depending on your source material, you'll either choose between frame packing, which is a 3D Blu-ray, side by side, top and bottom, frame alternative and line interlace. For this, I'm gonna be using frame packing since this is a 3D Blu-ray. Once you do that, you can see that you get that ghosting doubled image. So you will need active DLP 3D glasses. If you wanna pick up these 3D glasses, I'll leave some links below in the video's description for them. You can pick them up on Amazon for fairly cheap. Under the 3D settings, there is a left and right exchange. There's also 3D to 2D and also 3D to 2D TB. And if you do want to smooth out the image, you can also try out the MEMC, which is the motion interpolation. So it'll smooth out the motion if you want to go for that 48 frames per second effect. Otherwise, just keep it all for 24 frames per second. And as far as 3D image quality, this is about as good as it gets. The only other projector that comes close to being as bright as this one is a $28,000 Sony XW7000ES. So for a fraction of the price of the Sony, this is just as bright, if not brighter. And I'd also say it might be even sharper than the Sony as well. I'm noticing no ghosting, it's crystal clear, it's razor sharp, and the image just looks fantastic. That the metahuman dubbed by social media as the Aquaman
At the time of this video, the AWOL LTV3500 is selling for $5,500, although it might be on sale by the time you see this video. Now, if you want to save a few hundred bucks and don't need a projector as bright as the LTV3500, you can pick up the LTV2500, which is $3,500, with a brightness output of 2,600 lumens, as opposed to the 3,500 lumens on the LTV3500. But if you are planning to use this during the day with the lights on, I'd go for the LTV3500 the brighter the better. I think for the asking price, this is the most impressive ultra short throw out there right now. Not only is it one of the brightest projectors out there for daytime use and HDR impact, it also rivals my JVC NZ8 for 3D content. It actually looks brighter and sharper. When I came back from watching Avatar and IMAX and compared it to the AWOL the minute I got home, the AWOL looked better. It just wasn't as big. Now for normal viewing with the lights on or with lights coming through your windows, it was very watchable with a compatible ALR screen. Now if you are watching a dark movie with a lot of blacks and shadows, that's where ultra short throw projectors are going to struggle with daytime or ambient light usage. The image will wash out and make it very hard to see details. And this is with any ultra short throw projector, not just the AWOL. So for the most pristine image quality, you're going to want to keep the lights down low or completely off. Now, I didn't touch on the smart features because it uses a standard Amazon Fire Stick, and that's its own standalone product. There's plenty of Fire Stick videos on YouTube already, so if you need to see those features, just search for Amazon Fire Stick 4K. This video was mainly on the AWOL's performance. And like I said earlier, this has an amazingly bright image with HDR that's incredibly vibrant. It's got a bit of lag for competitive video gaming, but you can kind of get used to it after a while, so keep that in mind. The audio was sufficient if you don't plan on using this with a separate audio system, and one of the best things is that it's super quiet even when you have the laser on max brightness. Overall, this is a fantastic projector that, once paired up with a proper projection screen, can definitely replace a television set. It's got some of the best 3D performance I've seen on a projector at any price point, and the image for HDR content is a razor sharp stunner. So what are your thoughts on ultra short throw projectors? Have you seen one and how do you think they compete with televisions? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Now if you do want to pick up an AWOL, I'll leave some links down below in the video's description. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again in the next video.